feel like I should be telling you secrets. Good day, friends. I had a whole introduction filmed at the beginning of this project, and when I went over the footage, I realized it, it was bad. As in, I'm Mare from the future about to shoot the reveal and just popped in to redo the introduction bad. My lighting was crap, the camera angles were all wrong, I'd filmed in the living room and my camera is an older one with a back facing screen so I tried to make sure I was in frame and just sort of took it on faith that things looked okay and they weren't. And I guess you could say that was, I don't know, a portent, an omen, foreshadowing things to come. I've always liked pinafores. Probably because Alice in Wonderland was one of my favorite books when I was a kid. I mean, whether you're looking at the illustrations in the book or watching the Disney movie, the pinafore game is... Do the kids still say on fleek or have we solidly gravitated to the chef's kiss? Because Alice was original cottage core. In the week before Christmas, I decided to make a festive plaid pinafore out of tablecloths. I thought it would be easy. I'd make a circle skirt out of a round tablecloth and the bib and straps from a rectangular cloth. It would have been nice to find one of the over-the-top tablecloths with metallic threads, but this would do. It might even be a little rockabilly which would extend its wear beyond the festive season. Honestly, I thought my plan was far too easy, so I tried to draft my own bodice similar to the full pinafore dresses Rachel Maxey and Morgan Donner wear. I'd have just bought a pattern, but finding one in my size was somewhere on the scale between practically impossible and prohibitively expensive. I wound up scrapping that idea when I came to the realization that I was nowhere close to a final bodice draft by the end of the third evening. Back to square one. Which, all things considered, turned out to be enough of a challenge. I'm not exactly the most competent sewist. Yes, I can sew when I need to, but I'm still very much a beginner. If you've seen any of my previous attempts, you might have figured out that I'm a bit of a disaster sewist. Whether I follow the instructions or not, things don't generally turn out the way I planned, and most of the time I just laugh it off because that's part of the journey of learning. Things would turn out okay enough, and the drama makes for good YouTube. Folks, I couldn't do that this time. The December holiday season is the most stressful time of year at the best of times. I came in on it behind in my family sock knitting and I hadn't even gotten started on the presents I wanted to make. It's like a time vortex opened up somewhere around Halloween and spit me out about two days before Christmas. The two days I thought I'd need for my pinafore has extended past a week. I'm not sure when this video will go live with luck the first Sunday in 2021, but I'm thinking the pinafore will be slightly more rockabilly and a bit less home for the holidays if you catch my meaning. If you want to try this at home, you'll need the following materials. One round tablecloth, one rectangular tablecloth, preferably the same pattern. I'm using the Bee and Willow Home Festive Plaid set from Bloodbath and Beyond, but if you can find what you're looking for at the thrift store, then have at it, I say. A zipper. I used an invisible zipper. One to three buttons. Velcro. And also your usual complement of necessities. Out of all of them, I'd say the seam ripper is most important. I found instructions online for turning a tablecloth into a circle skirt. I figured I'd pop a waistband on it, cut out a square for the bib, and sew some straps on. Easy peasy. For the skirt, you need to do some basic math. Take your waist measurement and add on an inch for each seam you want to add. Divide that number by pi, 3.14, and then divide that number by 2. That will give you the radius of the circle you want to cut out of the middle. Personally, I found it harder to fold the tablecloth evenly compared to doing the math. I went with a seam up each side plus a back seam for the zipper. Why, you might ask? One word. Pockets. You may notice me wearing the same hoodie over the days it took to make the dress. That's because the cloth was so loosely woven it frayed if you looked at it funny. Rather than pick little threads off all my clothing, I figured it was easier to just sacrifice one or two tops to the sewing fates.
After cutting my seams, I pinned everything back together again and set the skirt aside. I cut three strips widthwise from the rectangular tablecloth. These would be the waistband and two straps. I eyeballed the waistband. It's about three inches wide, give or take. I was using the plaid pattern as a guide. The straps were measured to be the same width. I also cut out a rectangle as the bib. I folded the straps in half lengthwise and stitched them into a long tube. I pressed open the seam, then turned it inside out, pressed and top stitched. There's generally ironing happening between the steps. Unfortunately, the ironing board is in an area that's difficult to film, so no ironing footage for you. I cut a piece of white cotton as a lining for the back of the bib and stitched it on. I tucked the straps inside and sewed them in, then gave the seams a press before turning everything right side out. In the morning, I looked up how to insert pockets. I believe I'm watching Morgan Donner sew pockets in all her dresses here. Following Morgan's directions, I drafted a template. I used my phone both as a sewing weight and a gauge of how large the pocket should be. Then I cut four pieces, two pockets, out of my excess material. I just spent the past half hour to 45 minutes ripping out a pocket and a side seam because I realized that what I had done was essentially create two smaller sized skirts rather than two side seams for one large skirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to that back zipper area and back seam so that I can figure this side out a little easier. <sighs> I don't know why they call it sewing. I've started thinking about it as recreational seam ripping. That moment marked the beginning of a long line of seams sewn and then ripped. I used an online tutorial to install my invisible zipper below the waistband. It was pretty involved, but it did the trick. Then I attached my pockets, pressed them out, and included them in my side seam, which was a trick I picked up from one of Angela Clayton's recent Coatmas videos. Side seams done, I then sewed in the waistband three times. Seriously, it took me three attempts to get this right, and I'm using the cheerful music to keep from getting downright depressed at the thought. Waistband number one. Off camera, I compared the waistband to the skirt and wondered why the waistband was so short. So I pattern matched and lengthened it. Then I pinned the pinafore to the waistband and the waistband to the skirt of the dress and stitched it down. Then I stitched in the ditch on the other side and tried it on. Perhaps I should have tried it on before I stitched it down. Waistband attempt number two. Because I didn't want the waist of the skirt to stretch any further, I cut the waistband above the seams and used it as a stabilizer. Then I carefully unpicked it, which ate up the better part of a day, and put in some grow grain. If it's good enough to stabilize the waist of a corset or the button band of a sweater, it should work fine here. I ran a set of gathering stitches and gathered to the sections carefully marked out on the freshly cut new waistband. I decided to make the pinafore bib and straps removable at this point. It's a good idea. It can either be a dress or a skirt. I also want to make some alterations to the bib, so in the meantime I put that aside. Then I stitched everything else down and wondered why there was a gap at the top. Instead of being too big by 5 inches, it was too big by a still noticeable 2.5 inches. Waistband attempt number 3. I unpicked the waistband and pulled up a bit more slack on the gathering stitches. I measured everything to the nth degree on the waistband and matched my seams. I tried the skirt on, made a couple more adjustments, and then sewed everything down again. Success! issues creating the buttonhole using my sewing machine, so I cut it open and stitched it by hand. With the button attached, all I needed to do was complete the bib and straps. I tapered the base of the bib by about an inch on each side, then turned the bottom edge in and top stitched. 
Finally, I added Velcro to the places where the bib and straps would attach. The fuzzy side is on the waistband and the scratchy side on the bib and straps. Then I sewed the Velcro down so it doesn't come off in the wash. I sewed the pieces on the waistband by hand and definitely used my thimble. It still drew blood, but at least it was done. Someday, someday I'll be able to wear my dress outside, go places, do things, I mean go somewhere other than the grocery store because it's a thing. See that's the timey wiminess of editing. Now you'll never know if I'm actually recording before starting a project or if I'm just changing a shirt and some lipstick and maybe waiting about a half an hour for the sun to change direction, you know. Magic. Even though it had to go all dramatic on me, I do like the dress as much as it's a dress and not some weird modular fabric art installation. Uh, seriously, I haven't really thought of using Velcro in a sewing project in years, and it's, it, it, it's the kind of thing I reach for when trying to corral electronics. Otherwise, I think of it as a child-safe alternative to shoelaces. I may sew a couple of buttons on the shoulder straps just as decoration. I'm also wondering whether the invisible zipper should have just been installed last and gone all the way to the top of the waist rather than using a button. Live and learn, I guess. Though the button does seem to give me a sense of security. I'm really quite pleased with the pockets. All things considered, they were one of the less problematic features of the dress. It took a couple of tries to wrap my head around the idea, but I like how they turned out. Next time, I think I'll make them just a bit bigger. Little disappointed that the skirt isn't a little more... floaty. I always thought of circle skirts as having more fullness and volume. Apparently I was wrong about that though. I'm okay with this the way it is. I'm not doing a lot of twirling right now and maybe I'd want something a little less eye searing for that project. I'll think on it. Also if I twirl I may just start shedding threads so probably best not to twirl. At least not until I do some seam finishing. All things considered, while this dress was a struggle, I'm okay with the finished product. And I have a bit of leftover to play with as long as I zigzag any raw edges. Maybe I'll try out the bodice pattern I was working on. In the meantime, I have other projects I need to work on, so I'm going to get to them. Till then! I feel like I should be telling you secrets. I didn't hem this dress. I left the hem of the uh, tablecloth in place because I'm lazy that way. I mean, it was already done. Mm -hmm. Convenience? <laughs> 